Hey, what's up everyone? Happy to be back with another video. Um, today we're gonna switch things up a little bit from my normal kind of long tutorial format. Thought we'd sit down and talk about how to be successful in a programming interview. So we'll kind of go through some of the details of how programming interviews work, and then some of my tips and tricks to kind of get through that successfully and you know what you should prep and what you should do to be ready for that interview day. Okay, so what are my qualifications to do this video? Well, while I was a student at MIT, I had a lot of experience interviewing with all sorts of tech companies from companies like um, Cisco to Two Sigma to Google. Uh, I kind of went through so many interviews during my time. So I had a feel of, you know, how, the type of questions they're gonna ask you and like when I was successful and when I wasn't successful. Uh, and then my second qualification is that in my current role at a company called Posh Technologies, I'm doing a lot of interviews. I'm interviewing candidates very often. So I've been able to see kind of from the interviewer perspective, what makes someone successful and then what kinds of things you should avoid and kind of makes you unsuccessful ultimately. Okay, so with a programming interview, I would say that there's a spectrum of types that you could have. So on the one hand, you have a company maybe sends you this offline coding challenge where they send you a problem, you have two to three hours to complete it, and then you send back your completed code to the company where you're not actually really directly conversing with anyone there, but they will be evaluating your code. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have what you think of a more traditional interview where you go on site, you have two to three interviewers, you're in front of a whiteboard and you're solving some sort of technical problem. So this video will cover kind of all of that spectrum. We'll start off with some general tips that should help you with any programming interview, but then we'll kind of break it down towards the end of the video uh, and give you some specific information on those different types of interviews. Before we get into the tips, let's just get on the same page as far as what you might be asked in a programming interview. So here are a couple questions on the screen. Uh, so here's the first one, you know, how do you find duplicate numbers in an array? In the interview, you'd kind of discuss how you'd write an algorithm to do that. Same thing for writing the method to compute all permutations of a string. All sorts of algorithms questions. And then the other kind of type of question, and these types uh, broaden as you get into a more specialty. So if you're like interviewing for a systems engineering position, you might also have a systems design problem. If you're interviewing for a machine learning role, you'd probably have more specific questions tailored to machine learning. Uh, but yeah, one thing you might commonly be asked is about object-oriented programming. So how can you structure your code in a neat and organized manner? For a little bit more of a general table of things you wanna know, here is a helpful little chart. I uh, took this from a book that I'm gonna mention as a resource called uh, Cracking the Coding Interview. So data structures, you'll wanna know about arrays, hash tables, etc. cetera. You'll know, wanna know some basic algorithms. You don't need to know the specific details of how like all these specific algorithms work. What's more important is that you understand the, the types of problems you'll be asked and like from the algorithms you've seen, you know, kind of how do you apply that type of logic to a new problem. But you don't have to really know every single, like I don't, off the top of my head, I always remember like Dijkstra's algorithm or all these specific algorithms, but I understand like a search problem. Uh, I know how to attack those problems. That's kind of where you wanna be at. And then some concepts you'll wanna know, uh, big O time and space, that's very good to know when you're talking about a question and describing and getting to an answer how fast and how much space it takes. Object oriented, I've kind of m mentioned, just designing a nice set of classes and uh, methods to kind of organize your code recursion, dynamic programming, etc. So that's kind of some stuff you'll be asked about in the programming interview. So now let's get into the tips. First tip, and this is the most important tip, uh, you just gotta practice. I mean, when it comes down to it, no, no like magical article is gonna get you perfectly ready. No magical video is gonna get you, like I can only say so much in a video. If you really wanna do well in a programming interview, you just gotta put in the time and work on problems, get the hang of these types of questions you'll be asked really be comfortable doing them. So a couple of resources to like get more prepared doing that. First one, the one that I use kind of when I was going through interview process is Cracking the Coding Interview by Gail Lockman. Uh, really good at introducing what programming interview is about, brings up the types of information you'll need to know for each type of question you might be asked. And then there's a bunch of examples of problems you can go through and then detailed solutions in the back of the book. So that is a great resource. Uh, I have a link to that book in my description. That, you know, you might have to pay for. There's also a lot of like really good free resources. So two that I recommend on that 
end that you can find a lot of the problems and they have little code editors right there. First one is Elite Code. Great place, has tens of thousands of questions broken down by type of question. So if you're struggling with something specific, you can kind of go there. You also have a relative difficulty of the questions there. So maybe you're working on like object-oriented programming stuff or algorithms questions and you want to start off easy, but then you can see with Elite Code, you can kind of go through and work on some harder ones. Next uh, site I'd recommend is HackerRank, uh, another very similar platform to Leet Code. tons of questions. And really, honestly, it comes down to it. Go through the questions and just try as many as possible and get the hang of it. Look at the solutions. Uh, just do more and more and more and you'll start to get the hang of it. Uh, in addition to these two sites, uh, one thing I do recommend because these sites help you get so far as doing problems but if you're doing this in like a whiteboard scenario, it is get more difficult. If you have a friend or a coworker, someone that you could actually have gather a couple programming questions and actually like quiz you on the spot more in a traditional like whiteboard format, that is also really, really helpful to do. And what works is if you just have one person that you know that would be interested in doing this, you can gather a couple questions you think are good. They could gather a couple questions that they think are good. And then you kind of, interview the other person with your questions and then they interview with their questions and you don't know what's coming so it's a very realistic setting but it's controlled and you can kind of work through the problems together. So that's another recommendation. In addition to actually these you know very fine-tuned directed practice problems there's other ways you can practice kind of in the background of your daily life I guess. Uh, the first thing I would recommend is read. So one thing that I do that helps me kind of stay up to date on kind of what's going on in the programming world is I follow all sorts of cool people on Twitter. And so I can see immediately when they published a paper or something. So like I follow Google AI, I follow open AI, follow like Facebook research, all sorts of those people. Also some of the people, when I read a paper and I see a couple uh, you know, of the author's names, maybe I follow some of the authors because they're posting cool stuff. So that's like one thing is like on your social media platforms, follow uh, things that you're interested in that are technical and you'll kind of be able to stay up to date on what's going on in your field of interest. Another good place to do some reading is Reddit. I've friggin' part of my language. I really like Reddit. Uh, it's really cool too because you can find, you know, you can go to r slash Python and find all sorts of cool projects people are doing with Python, you know, up to dates on the, you know, Python version and uh, different new libraries that are coming out. So it's a good way to stay. Reddit has a lot of good resources. I like Reddit R Python. I like Reddit R slash programming. Uh, also, I'm a machine learning guy uh, in my full-time job. So I like uh, R slash machine learning as well for some content. I mean, there's tons and tons of online reading resources. Uh, I find a lot of good stuff through Medium. People write all sorts of good um, articles, you know, breaking down maybe complex concepts in simple ways. So look for Medium. Uh, you don't have to be looking for anything in particular, but just reading and like always being learning in the background. That's something you can do and add. You know, if you just read one article a day, that's all you have to do, or maybe even one article a week, just like kind of in the background be learning. You know, that's gonna put you in a good position to have exciting things to talk about in an interview setting. That's kind of the end of the, 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 the end goal by reading and staying up to date is you have cool stuff to talk about. And I mean, you're learning through doing that. That's some way you can pack practice in the background. Actually, another site that I think has some cool stuff is news, the Y Combinator, the Hacker News through Y Combinator. That usually has a good amount of new developments in programming. They have, you know, they'll, they'll bring up articles on like security uh, breaches and all sorts of cool stuff. So yeah, read, read, read is a great way to practice in the background, uh, it kind of as a supplement to practice problems you might be doing. Okay, moving into the more, I guess, interview day, conversational type stuff when you're actually doing the problem in the interview setting. First tip in that regard is to explain yourself. Uh, if, if I ask you a question, don't just kind of blindly write stuff on the board and, and think that I'll understand it. Take a step back and talk about the problem. Say, hey, uh, you know, I know that the simplest solution I could do for this problem is A, uh, but I think I can optimize it more and like do B. Like as you work through your problem, really be explicit with what you are thinking and that will really help the interviewer kind of gauge where you're at. It will 
clarify things. It'll, like The communication is an important aspect of a successful interview, so that will help in that regard. One of the next two videos that I will post will be me walking through one or two interview questions. In that video, if you're curious, I'll post that within the next couple weeks. That will kind of show you what I mean when I'm saying explain yourself. Uh, on the topic of kind of explaining yourself, this is kind of a similar but different tip is kind of get out your knowledge. Show You, you want to be able to demonstrate your knowledge. So even though you might not understand how exactly to solve a problem, say, oh, I see how this connects to a different problem I know how to solve, and maybe say some information about that different problem. Figure out how you can use that to maybe get a little bit farther in the question. Uh, by linking different types of problems, it shows that even if you don't know something exactly, you can take what you do know, build off of that, and then learn something new and solve a new problem. So. Yeah, I mean, just kind of getting out the information you know is a, another good thing that will usually help you. As long as what you're talking about is relevant and you're not just spewing random information, talking about things you know uh, usually is a good strategy. The next tip is to ask questions. Uh, as an interviewer myself, sometimes I will like purposely leave out a detail because I want to make sure that the interviewee really understands the problem to know which types of questions to kind of ask to clarify on details that maybe are a little bit ambiguous uh, with the way I ask the question. So as an example of a question you might ask is, look at this graph on the screen uh, and let me say that I am trying to look for the shortest path from A to B. Uh, but that's kind of all I say. I show the graph and, you know, say A to B. Uh, one good follow-up question might be, oh, is this graph directed or undirected? Uh, because that changes the solution of the problem. Overall, asking questions is a good way to show that you really, like, understand what the question's ask, uh, talking about. It shows the interviewer that you kind of can think about you can take a step back and like think about the big picture, how things fit together, uh, and really understand the problem as opposed to just kind of jumping through and solving it. So ask questions throughout the interview. If you don't understand something, ask for clarification. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, it's totally fine. On the topic of questions, also make sure that you have some questions prepared to ask the interviewer at the kind of conclusion of your interview. So good questions would show that you are interested in the company and also want to learn more. So a good question might be something like, oh, can you tell me the a little bit more about the day-to-day -day responsibilities of this role? Another good question might be something like, what is a, a, you know, an exciting challenge that you've been working on recently? I'm curious to hear a little bit more about that. Both of these questions kind of show that you're you're more interested in getting a, a more full picture of the role uh, and you know all that comes with it and the exciting problems that position works on. Questions you do not want to ask are stuff like what is my pay going to be or how many vacation days do I get? If you get an offer, you can then kind of discuss these things, but if you are in a technical interview and you ask those types of things, it's a pretty big red flag. So do not ask about your salary or your vacation days in that technical interview portion, very bad idea. Real quick, a specific tip for the coding challenge interview that I mentioned kind of at the start of the video where they send you a problem and you have two to three hours to complete it, but there's no actual back and forth conversation. I recommend for an interview like that to try to get the solution to the problem done as quickly as possible and then use the remainder of the time cleaning up your code. So usually, those types of problems will have test cases so you can see if your code's working right there. So once you have a working solution, uh, go through your code and make it as clean as possible. So that includes you know, making descriptive variable names, uh, making your functions succinct and you know, very specific to what they're doing, maybe using a class to better stru overall structure your code. That's just one tip for that coding challenge. And then on the in-person interview side of things, one thing I want to discuss real quick is dress. What do you want to wear to an in-person interview? Okay, starting it off, a suit, I would say in most cases, is a bit too overdressed. Um, unless you're interviewing at like a big bank, most tech roles, uh, you don't really need to wear a suit. That would be a little bit too much. Uh, same thing with just a shirt and tie, usually a little bit too much for a, a tech company. If you're at a more traditional bank, yeah, you can wear a shirt and tie, but I would say that probably these two categories are probably a little bit too formal for a programming interview. If you're ever unsure though, erring on the side of too formal is definitely better than erring on the side of too casual. Uh, moving forward, 
a dress shirt and pants. I would say this is the best thing to wear for an interview. It shows that you're kind of in touch with tech in general. Uh, you're not too overdressed, but it also shows at the same time that you are taking this interview seriously. Dress shirt and nice pants, nice shoes, that's like my go-to. Uh, less nice than that, but still also right in that nice, just right category would be a polo and khakis. Also a fine thing to wear to an interview. Uh, moving on a little bit more. Uh, next one is a t-shirt and you know, like skate shoes, khakis. I would say that's a little bit underdressed. You could get away with it and you know, maybe I would wear this outfit to work. But when I'm doing an interview, it's, I think you, you wanna wear a little bit more than that. And then the final one is this. Um, yeah, that one probably don't, don't wear to an interview. Uh, not the best idea. Ladies, don't worry, I did not forget about you. Uh, if you're a female engineer going to a programming interview, here are some recommendations for what you should wear. I recruited some help for this question. First person that helped me was my friend Kylie from MIT, who's a developer at a small startup in Boston right now. Uh, so I asked her the question, you know, what do you wear as a girl to a programming interview? And this is what she said. So basically, you know, pretty casual unless you're interviewing for finance, but be comfortable. It's the gist of her messages. I also reached out to my friend Steph, who's a developer at Amazon, and she kind of had the same similar sentiment, you know, basically be comfortable. These big tech companies aren't looking for super, super formal. Uh, and she even blessed us with a video of what she wore on the day she interviewed at Amazon and ultimately got the job. So here's a short clip of that. And then outfit is casual too, because they have a casual dress code and they said no suits. A big thank you to Kylie and Steph for answering my question. Uh, make sure to go show them some love on their uh, Instagrams. All right, I think that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully you learned something. If you have any kind of further questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, it'd mean a lot to me if you throw it a big thumbs up. And also if you haven't already, if you subscribe, that would be super duper. Um, let me think if I have anything else. Uh, yeah, also, Hit me up on the other social media platforms, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I have a lot of other cool content on both of those platforms, so you don't want to miss that. Uh, that's all we got. Uh, thanks again for watching, guys. Peace out.